All right. Uh, so Don Long is asking about uh, Traveris Robinson. He is the uh, defensive coordinator at South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to pretend to give you some in-depth analysis of his work at South Carolina. This is what I will say. Uh, he played at Auburn. He's been mm -hmm. the South Carolina defensive coordinator for about five years. This is what I will say is that with all Will Muschamp's inabilities and misgivings as a head coach, uh, not being able to build a sustained winner. And when I say sustained, he has had winning teams at South Carolina and Florida, but a sustained winner. And that's why he's out of a job at South Carolina. He does know defense about as well as anybody in college football. And for him to select and retain for five years, a defensive coordinator, the guy must know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Coach Robinson, do you know where his hometown is? I don't. Is Miami, that being asked because he's from Miami? He's from Miami, Florida. Okay. And the reason why he didn't come here is because we were under sanction. So he grew up wanting to be here. Okay. Um, he was a big thorn in our side at the University of Florida when he was a cornerbacks coach when Coach Muschamp was there. Okay. He was the head recruiter for South Florida. And the biggest, the two biggest group of young men he pulled from the University of Miami were the Hargrave brothers and the Wilson brothers. Mm -hmm. It's a couple of first rounders in there. Just throw it off there. Yeah. The Wilson brothers' dad was a national championship winning corner at the University of Miami. And our program wasn't to the point. And our former head coach, Al Golden, didn't want to recruit his sons at corner. He thought they were better safeties. Yeah. Doesn't that make a lot of sense, Mark? That's the type of guy we had running our program. But either way, I don't want to go in there too long. Um, I think he would be a huge help. Here's why. I remember talking about Cristobal on here for the longest. Big, big Mario Cristobal fan. He's having his woes at Oregon, maybe at Auburn soon. Uh, but as of right now, you know, tough season. I mean, they, they did technically make back-to-back -back championship games. Just, just yeah. saying at, in the Pac-12. Yeah, they've lost two games this year. They'll be fine. Yeah, they'll be okay, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, but you ask Miami fans, it's all over, and he sucks. And, oh, Chris, the ball, to the, you know, they get all angry, uh, very emotional, very, very emotional yeah. people. Um, but he would fix it. The thing about Chris Ball that I was talking about was our issue was offensive line at the time, and still is to a certain extent, right? So if he comes here, he would be able to fix because he was a national championship offensive lineman at Miami. He goes to Oregon and magically Oregon's offensive line turns into one of the best. Okay. So that I feel like that would have been two birds, one stone, right? The other thing, cornerback recruiting, cornerback development has been a little iffy. Development iffy recruiting horrible at Miami for a while now. You bring in Coach T-Rod, he fixes two birds, one stone. Okay, and he hasn't been uh, – he's been at D.C. before, of course, at South Carolina. I think he's made quality enough money that if we made the situation right for him, I think he would be a great plug-in here. The other thing I would say about that is could we afford his assistance? Would he want to work? and run the Coach Manny Diaz defense, because that's what we do. We still do. Even though Coach Blake Baker is the coordinator, we run the Manny Diaz defense. Uh, he even said himself, like, they come up with the game plan as a whole, and everyone puts their input in. Would he want to come deal with that? Would he want to come deal with how Coach Manny Diaz and Coach Efren Banda feels as though they know more and they recruit both safeties and corners? Would he want to come deal with that situation also? So those are something that you 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 want to question. Would Coach Diaz relinquish the defense and hand it over to Coach T. Rock and bring in his staff and allow them to run whatever defense they're going to run? Who knows? So um, in my opinion, it won't happen. I think it would be a great opportunity. Um, he's a man, amazing recruiter in state. He. I'm <laughs> It was a problem when he would come down 
and that gator orange and blue and we were trying to recruit a player he would it would snag him it wouldn't even be a conversation now whether it was sec stuff added with that or not he could develop you so what he would say is i got i just had a first rounder i got another one in a couple years and everyone in my defensive back court was drafted before day three even started could you imagine saying stuff like that so it's a lot easier to recruit when you can recruit and develop so you bring them in, and then you also see them through all the way to the other side of the bridge, and now they're instant millionaires. If I'm a five-star recruit, oh, I want to be a part of that. Why not bring it down here? Will it happen? No. The only thing, the only changes that would happen at the University of Miami defensively if we let go of Coach Efron Bandits, they would just promote. Oh, uh, let go of Coach Baker. They would just promote Efron Bandit from co DC to regular DC. That's it. I've accepted it. Chuck Mobier, appreciate that uh, super chat contribution, and I want to remind everyone that um, if you've got any kind of connection to a sponsor, we would love to get these shows sponsored. They're more sustainable if they get sponsored, and we appreciate the individual contributions from you. And I will credit again this Miami fan base for supporting my show more than any other fan base. 